Hey everybody, Sam here and welcome back to Green Acre Homestead. I have a little bit different video for you today, but I think you guys will enjoy it all the same. I want to bring you along as we do our product photography for our small business. If you're interested to see a little behind the scenes of how we set up a photo studio, how we capture our products, light them, and work with them to give good results on a website, stick around. That being said, you may be wondering, especially if you don't know me, or if you only know us through our YouTube channel, well, that's pretty much everybody, isn't it? You might be wondering, Sam, what gives you the, the right to stand there and tell me how to take pictures of products? Did you go to school for product photographyology? Do you have a degree in picturesqueness? No, I don't. I have no such formal training in photo genealogy or any kind of cameraistics degrees or anything on my shelf. I do, however, have a history of being a landscape and wedding photographer, a YouTube video creator, and a guy who knows, when he likes a picture, how to replicate it. Alright, that being said, let's go ahead and dig through this place, find our gear, I'll amass it here on the table, and then we'll do a little show and tell and tell you why exactly I picked all this stuff and what the hodgepodge means. I will go ahead and say that I am only going to be touching the tip of the iceberg for product photography. What you're going to see is a very Cliff Notes version. There is a whole slew of information out there, tools, techniques, gear, and everything of the sort that you can really squirrel down into or fall into rabbit holes if you want to. That being said, I don't want everybody to glaze over super hard on this video, so I'm going to be giving you Sam's Cliff Notes version of product photography. First thing you want to do is find a space to take your photos and depending on the product you're going to photograph that's kind of going to dictate your space as far as how much room you may need whether it be large or small. In our case our products we are taking pictures of today are bars of handmade soap so we don't need a huge space. At the same time, it's nice to have a little room to walk around and mess around with things as you're doing things, so try and find the largest space possible within reason. I mean, it wouldn't make sense to be in a warehouse for this. In our case, I'm here in my workshop, and I'm going to find a level surface to start setting up my photo studio on top of. In my shop, that means my CNC table. Eh, it's not supposed to be used for photos, but it's a flat surface that's clean, that is at a comfortable height to work with. So today, it'll be a photo studio table. So what I have done here is not only create a pile of seemingly junk, but I've gathered all the things that I think I will need, plus more, for this planned photo shoot. Let me go ahead and pull a couple of the bits and pieces out here to do a little bit of show and tell and explain why I picked them and how they could be used. And then we'll get everything set up and start shooting some stuff. All right, let's cover the big stuff first and so I can get it out of the way and we can just kind of move on. <laughs> Here I have some off the shelf dry erase boards slash chalkboards that I got from the hardware store. These are great for your base and your background if you want to create that pure white background effect for your photos. You will have a seam where they touch, but that can be easily removed with your photo editing software. Most free ones nowadays have the easy one tap if you're on your phone or click if you're on your computer. As far as background cleanup and blemish removal, and the technology has really come a long way to make the photo editing very easy for the end user. I have the whiteboards for our case to become the background and that'll give us a nice clean background to not absorb the light and not detract from the product itself either. This likewise can be used as your background if instead of a bright white background you would rather have something to kind of give a more warm appearance, a brown appearance, or something a little bit different. Material like this is easy to find off the shelf at hardware stores or dumpsters, neighbors houses, wherever. Even cardboard would work for this kind of effect. And so it's nice to give you the option for a different look to your products, photos, depending on whatever you want. So that's what I've picked for my background options, but like I said earlier, I'm just going to be using the white for our photos. I wanted to show you the wood to give you another option, and like I also mentioned, these are black on the other side. 
So if you're looking for a black effect, this is a cool two-in-one panel that in our case is available off the shelf at the hardware store, which makes it a lot more affordable than if you were to look for a photographer's product that is white and black. If you go down the rabbit hole of looking for something that is advertised for photography, your price is going to jump. Now there are reasons to do that for sure, and there's a couple of things I want to show you guys that we have bought that are photographer specific, but I also want to give you the option and show you that with a little creativity and thinking outside the box, you can find some really affordable solutions for your stuff. That covers the background for the photos, so now let's talk about the base. And in our case, the base for us is what these product will actually sit on that will partially be included in the pictures as well. For us, we like using this. This is some scrap barn wood. Well, nowadays barn wood's not considered scrap, it's considered premium, but it would otherwise be known as scrap wood if it didn't come from a barn. This is actually old weathered wood that I cut and stapled together to give myself a panel of old weathered wood. On this side, we have the nice weathered appearance. And on the back side, if we wanted a more cleaner but weathered appearance, I could use this too. For our product photos, this is going to become the base. I want kind of the rustic charm look and having it sitting on top of this wood, I believe, will give me the effect I want. Along the same lines, I have a piece of cedar wood here. This actually was a shelf off of a TV unit that was trashed on the side of the road. I may or may not end up using this for our pictures, but I pulled it aside to show you guys how something that is trash can be picked up, sand it down to smooth it out, and then take advantage of the uniqueness of this piece to possibly work into your product photography. Next up, we have something that is a Sam creation, a weird box tray thing. Um, some gnarly old plywood, of course, again, Sam's repurposed some things. Uh, yeah, so otherwise, what is this? Like Sam's version of Jumanji board game? <laughs> well, no, not exactly. This is a DIY homemade photo studio in a box majig. Let's open this up and you can see what I've done. Inside we have some moss fabric that I got from a craft store and it is stapled down to the bottom and the back and there's a little flap here and the point of that flap is that whenever your product is sitting here you can kind of pull it down like that and it'll give a seamless background. This is an easy way of incorporating some green nature woodland forest settings for small items without having to be out in the green nature forest setting in real life. Really cheap to do, especially considering that this is scrap wood. Uh, you could do the same thing with cardboard boxes or anything like that. So kind of an example of how you can be creative and think outside or inside the box and come up with something that may work or be unique for your uses. This is also the kind of setup that would be great if you don't have a large space for your photos and you don't have large items to take photos of, this is nice. It packs up in a box, or I guess is a box itself, and would live fine on a shelf, under a bed, behind the couch, wherever you want to throw it. Because, I mean, I don't think any of us are just rolling in the free space in our houses. So, I want to show that to you guys. I don't know if I'll use it for today, but I want to show it all the same. Next up, we have the first of two commercial solutions I want to show you for product photography. No doubt you will see these kind of things advertised on Amazon, on eBay, and on the internet at large when you search for how to take pictures of a product. This is effectively a pop-up white cube. It is uh, this white fabric here that I'm about to hit myself in the face with. So this is effectively a portable fold out pop up photo studio. This will allow you to get a nice diffuse light environment. You put your lights on the outside and your product inside and a nice clean little environment to snap photos with. This is really popular for small scale photography, things like eBay, Amazon listings perhaps. This unit came with colored backdrops to allow this to be all white or black. I think they also had red and blue. 
Over the years, I've ended up just using it for the diffuse properties of these panels. It allows me to put my lights close, but give a softer cast of light on the objects. The big benefit is this does fold up. It is not very large. And this unit itself actually came with LED lights. And all in all, not very expensive to buy, but pretty useful and I'd say we got our money's worth out of it over the years. Still sticking with me? Good. Last up is to show you this other item that could be used for a large enclosure. Let's say you have large objects and you're like, well, those are all great solutions, but you know, I want to photograph a chair. In that sense, a portable spray tent might be good for you. This is effectively the same thing as this little cube pop-up was except it's a lot larger and taller. I want to say this was a total of maybe $30, and this unit itself is close to 4 feet tall and 30 inches square. I don't use this for product photos. This I use as a spray tent here in my workshop when I'm spraying finishes and paint. However, this could very easily be used for product photography, and I wanted to show it to you guys because the more info you know, the more info you know. We have covered backdrop, base, and portable tent pop-up solutions. The next thing I want to cover is lighting. Now, oh my goodness, the options and possibilities are endless when it comes to lighting. There are probably two biggest takeaways I want to give as far as recommendations. One, make sure whatever lighting you use, it's all the same color temperature. You'll find this listed on the products as four numbers and usually the letter K. That denotes the lights temperature in Kelvin. In my workshop all of these lights are 5500 Kelvin. I don't think this little guy is 5500 so I probably will not use it today. That being said, since I'm in my workshop I have an extra light that's installed in my workshop. This is a four foot LED bulb with a little switch. It's simply just plugs into the wall. I will be using this for my lighting for today's purposes. If you don't have such luxuries of lighting, don't worry. Like I said earlier, this little light came in that little pop-up tent and is a good kit overall. It actually came with three lights, so that's plenty for products. If you are going down the road that Sam has in the past as well, as far as, I don't want to spend much money. There's creative solutions around this. Well, you could always wire up your own LED light panel. And that's exactly what this is. This is a little kit that I made myself out of a little LED strip kit off Amazon. We wired it in back here, put a panel over top, and I have myself a bright LED panel that I can use for product photos. There is a video on my other channel that I'll link below of making this exact light panel. If you're interested and want to see the complete DIY process, I'll put that link down below. This has been a great light. I need to check the temperature. I think this is 5500 Kelvin as well. So if that's the case, I will use this today because it has been a nice light for soft, diffuse fill. And light is what you need for good pictures. Okay, that covers everything that's on the table. You may have also noticed I tossed a tripod on there. Yes, tripod is very important. Now, if you're just doing a couple of pictures here and there of a few objects, you may not need a tripod. You could probably get away with it. But in our case, where we have a uniform product of multiple different varieties, and in a background and everything, and they're all going to be listed on one page, it is very crucial that every single picture is framed, aligned, and from the same perspective. We could try and line this up in editing on the computer later, but honestly, what would be the best thing for us is to set our camera up on a tripod, leave it stable, steady, dial in the settings on the first product. When we're happy with that, don't touch any settings, and just click, 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 click as we run through the library of products. In that case, a tripod is invaluable and definitely, definitely needed for your photography.
think we are ready to go ahead and set the camera up on the tripod. I'll also bring a chair over, a stool to sit at as you're setting all this up so you're not hunched over the whole time. Um, but one other thing I wanted to show you was this little guy. Tripods can be expensive. Good quality, stable, sturdy, lasts more than two week tripods can be very expensive. If you're using a small camera or a smartphone, which is probably a good portion of people out there, then you can get away with something like this. This is called a articulating camera mount. It's made by a company called Small Rig, and I've had this for several years, and this thing works great. This is all aluminum metal construction. Basically, it's a clamp that has a thread on the other end for a tripod mount, or in my case, smartphone holder, to go in. This thing will lock down tight and is super strong and stable. Another cool benefit, this won't break the bank. I wanna say, probably looking at $35 for the clamp and the arm, and then this aluminum smartphone holder is probably another 15. Considering tripods nowadays can run 200 to $300 for a good quality one, makes this look really affordable and nice, doesn't it? In the effort to be as transparent with you guys as possible different shirt different day I ended it up not liking the photos I took last night there just wasn't enough light and there was not enough backlight on that whiteboard at the back so what I did was actually use my little pop-up photo studio um, as many DIY solutions as I gave you guys I still went with the commercial solution but that's because I needed the diffuse light when the light shines through the panels, these white side panels, it really softens the light and allows you to overexpose a photo, meaning make it brighter and bring in more light to the photo to give yourself a super nice white background without having hot spots. Lights without the diffusion panels will cause hot spots. And these LED lights from my workshop, they are just like all light. There is no diffusion going on. So I did want to share this with you guys before I ended out the video to let you see that this was my final setup. What I finally went with that I'm happy with and the solutions and pieces I used to get the product photos that I got. Speaking of product photos, let me go ahead and show you guys this here. Yep, is the final pictures that I got from the studio. As you can see, I did use the piece of walnut wood to sit this products on top of. And then the white background is nice and bright and allows it to integrate more seamless with a website with a white background as well. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. I'm sure there's a lot of things that you're probably wondering about from this whole arena of product photography. Again, this was just supposed to be a high level overview, not a deep dive. And for sure, I did not cover everything. Either way, we appreciate you guys watching and we'll see you guys next time on The Homestead. Sometimes you can sand yourself on X.
just a bit. Uh oh, did you sand yourself? Yeah. Now be careful, don't sand yourself. You don't have much self left, don't sand it away.